everyone, this is uh, PNE Solution Bond, and together with my longtime collaborator and master musician Matt Maneri, it's a pleasure to be part of NS Vosaurus Online, hosted by the Romanian Cultural Institute in New York, discussing our work over more than 10 years, reimagining the music of the famed Romanian composer George Enescu. Enescu was born in 1881 in Romania, and by the age of five, he was already composing. By the age of 12, he graduated from conservatory in Vienna and he moved on to Paris, where he started with Gabriel Fauré and had as a classmate uh, Maurice Ravel. By the time World War I started, Enescu was already an acclaimed violinist, it's one of the greatest of the 20th century, and he had a busy concert season traveling Europe and America as well, where a young Yehudi Menuhin would hear him in San Francisco and decide to move to Romania to study with him. Enescu lived a double life his entire life, actually. During the concert season, he was touring uh, constantly, but during the off-season, he would retire to Romania to dedicate himself to his lifelong passion, composing. He composed a series of works from chamber uh, music to symphonies and orchestral suites to his magnum work, Oedip, considered still today one of the greatest achievements of opera in the 20th century. The first time I worked on Enescu was uh, a commissioning from Enescu Festival in Bucharest, Romania, that asked me to reimagine his music from a jazz perspective. I started putting together with the uh, renowned uh, American jazz bass player Johnny Bear uh, an octet of stunning musicians to sort of tackle Enescu music from, from, from the standpoint of improvisation and we were lucky to be able to work with some of the most renowned contemporary jazz musicians today. Uh, I'm uh, mentioning here Ralph Alessi on trumpet, Tony Malaby on saxophone, uh, Gerald Cleaver on drums. From Germany we have violinist Albrecht Maurer, Matt Maneri on viola of course, and uh, on tabla and voice and various percussion we had the great Bada Roy. We reimagined a series of his orchestral works. One of that selection are, we are presenting in the, here for you, the octet for double string quartet uh, in C major, opus seven. Enescu composed this piece when he was 19 years old. The work is in a way stunning for somebody that age and for, for the literature. So we only dealt with the ideas and melodies from the first uh, section, Tre Modere, which we reimagined for bass, drums, trumpet, saxophone, tabla, violin and viola. It was quite a challenge to be able to bring the, uh, the improvisation within uh, the structure of, of rhythm music, but uh, as I've witnessed from that point on and all the way uh, till today, NS music lends itself very easily to improvisation. And uh, that's true for all of his work, including the vocal works, all the other ones. Next, uh, in uh, our presentation, there will be two pieces in duet. Matt Maneri and I have a long-standing duo that uh, was born, actually, out of uh, an Escore Imagine octet. Matt will talk about uh, a duo take on uh, uh, the prelude from the first orchestral suite. Uh, and uh, we also play uh, Vio Mendion, which means the old beggar, from his uh, childhood impressions from 1940. And lastly, also Matt will be discussing our latest work, which we premiered at uh, Lyon Opera in 2018, Opera Oedipe. That was quite a challenge for us, uh, because the opera itself is very long. It's a four-act opera that covers the entire life of uh, Oedipe, and it's uh, rather difficult. And it's one of the reasons it, it was performed so rarely uh, after its premiere in 1936 in Paris. Uh, the US premiere was in 2005 in uh, Chicago at the University of Urbana. We were lucky to have on uh, vocals Jen Shu and uh, uh, the great uh, Carol Blackman. We again uh, invited Ralph Alessi on trumpet, John Eber on bass, and we had uh, this time Tom Rainey on drums and the legendary bass clarinet player from France, Louis Clavis. Thank you for joining us and uh, we hope you'll enjoy the genius of George Enescu's music.
I'm Matt Veneri, and I'm pleased to introduce the two pieces that Lucian Bond and I uh, reinterpreted and performed by George Enesco, one of the 20th century's greatest composers and violinists. Uh, we did two of his pieces as a duet, uh, well, actually more, but these two, one is The Old Beggar from his childhood impressions, Sweet, and the other is the prelude from his first movement of his suite number one for orchestra, which was premiered in New York by Gustav Mahler near the end of his life. Uh, Lucian Ban, a Romanian uh, pianist and a New York uh, jazz musician as well, introduced me to his music much more than I ever could have imagined because as a violinist, classical trained, uh, yes, of course, Inesco, I heard about him. He was his Yehudi Menuhin's mentor. He was a great composer. But uh, in uh, North America, our exposure to him was limited. So when uh, Lucian came to me with this octet project, which he eventually did Inesco reimagined, and he said, yeah, I'm going to have tabla, I'm going to have this, I'm going to have that. I'm like, what are you doing, man? How are we going to do this? Um, uh, but amazingly enough, it worked. And what works is Inesco's melodies. His melodies are so strong, so folksy, yet impressionistic, that they transcend what you think is classical or jazz or world music or this or that, it can be used in a multi-dimensional uh, way, which I found very appealing as an improviser and as a classical musician. Um, Old Beggar, the childhood impressions. Okay, already it's impressionistic. The chords, very, very impressionistic. What's lovely about this now is that the melody is so soulfully uh, Romanian. It's it's soulfully folk, but playful in a very very violinistic way. You know all the liftoffs and things that are da da da, ba -da, -da. It's very violinistic. Now what's fascinating about Inesco is uh, as great as a violinist he was. He never wrote a violin concerto. He thought it would take away from his compositional cachet because he was such a good violinist. He didn't want to be known as the violin guy. I found that fascinating. But here, you can hear these violin chops coming through, but for simplistic melodies that are not so simplistic, that allow you to change key, to change where the direction of the harmonies are going because of the impressionistic harmonies that are going on in the piano um, allows it for uh, a really great examination of, of this kind of music. Now getting on to the prelude, which was, like I said, premiered by Mahler, who was one of the great, great conductors, as we know, and also a great composer and loved melody. As an improviser and composer, but mostly an improviser, I've often talked to my students about improvisation and what improvisation means. Uh, the, the, the big thing for me is that melody. Um, I've heard several people say that this melody from this prelude, one of his early symphony works, is one of the greatest melodies ever. Is that true? I, I don't know, but I'll tell you, if you have a record player, like a needlepoint, and you put it at any point of that melody, Da, 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 da. You could put it anywhere and it's going to be suspenseful, but it's going to be circular. It's going to create tension and release, but never let you go. Uh, Inesco is a master of melody. Two different complete melodies here that Lucian and I explored. Um, and uh, the prelude was arranged by John Hebert, which has this wonderful pedal point that can shift tonalities with this central melody that is almost harmonically devoid of that. 
It can transcend harmon harmony. That's what's so lovely. So I hope you appreciate it, and uh, I am so pleased to present this to you.
back and now we're talking about opera and Inesco's opera Edip. Now Oedipus is a story that's probably been operatized <laughs> more than any other, maybe, I don't know. I have to look into that, but what a great story. What a great tragedy. Uh, it's a tragedy of inwardness and outwardness. And this is something I think Inesco really understands. These melodies and motifs that he weaves through this opera, a very long opera, but these inward thoughts, you know, especially I picked up on da ba da ba, many melodies and many little motifs that are weaved in and out to give you a grounding effect of like the inward turmoil and then the outward drama, which is amazing, of course. Um, I was so pleased that Lucian asked me to uh, work on this and do a few interpretations. <laughs> um, like I said, Inesco once again displays this wonderful ability of creating vague harmonic situations where as an improviser, is this blues? Is this Indian classical? Is this Eastern European folk peasant music? Is this something else? He hints at these things and allows you to play with them as a classical musician. Now, as an improviser who's reinterpreting it, which I did with Lucian Bam, this allows a lot of doors open. So when we get the wonderful singers, Theo Blackman and Jen Shu, and this wonderful cast of guys backing them up, uh, it was such a pleasure to write just his source material, but the it's as if you put it in a pan and distilled it down and, and reduced it, reduced it, and reduced the sauce until you get those few nuggets of uh, melodies that he presented to us that really stuck. And uh, when I listened to the opera several times, there are certain themes throughout the whole thing that if you reduce it down, those are the keys. And I'm so pleased that Lucian and I got a chance to do this. Uh, please enjoy. Thank you.
Destin. 